And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Gangplank's Fate, our first deck today. You may have noticed that we played this deck in the seasonal tournament just a couple of days ago, and it looked good. We only played one matchup with it. We played against uh, Misfortune, Gangplank, just like the smaller version of this deck twice, and ended up winning both of those. Um, but it's going to be our first deck today. It's non -tar or no Targon Tuesday. So that's right, on Tuesdays here on the stream, let me move this up just a tad. There we go. Uh, we do not play Targon decks, at least for right now, you know, with Targon being so good. Um, so we're uh, playing four decks here. None of them have Targon and are for, and playing ranked, of course. And our first one's going to be this uh, good-looking Gangplank Twisted Fate uh, deck. So it's kind of like Pirate Aggro, but it goes a little bit bigger, a little bit more mid-rangey with like having salvage your ravenous flock Av arachnoid sentry combo um and of course a couple captain Farron at the top end it looks strong so we're gonna go play it in ranked let's go play five games let's see how we do against the field all right playing some discard burn we are playing like a kind of a different version of discard burn later on with some unique card choices so our opening hand i think salvage and spray fin are going to be a little slow and honestly death's hand kind of a little slow too so the thing about death's hand is it's going to be trading down in mana for us it's not going to be like we're not killing any three cost units with it we're not killing their champions draven or jinx with it it's like best case scenario we kill like an arena battlecaster probably All right, Augmented Experiment are gone. For the Empire. So I know we don't get any value out of the Demolitionist, but it's a 2-3. And if we just kind of look at what's going on here. I like playing the 2-3 over um, our other options. Please play something before combat so I get to Twisted Fate. Maybe not that thing before combat. Potentially it's better to just play this Arachnoid Sentry. Let's see, so if I go red for... No, yeah, we'll just do this. Alright, so we'll go red. Never lost a fair game. We'll and so then we'll block Crowd Favorite with the Demolitionist. That will set up Crowd Favorite of having two health. So the Death's Hand will kill it. Um, it may be better just to block with a Twisted Fate, actually. I take one extra point of damage, but I keep the 2-3 to match up against their 2-1. Charmed, I'm sure. So our Spray Fin has two targets. We have Death Sand and Ravenous Flock. Gotta go with the flow. I want Ravenous Flock. Yay, so we can pair so we can have sentry flock kill, you know, like a jinx or a draven. I'll shoot the wings off a do they play Noxion Fervor? They probably do, right? No? I can't remember. Been a minute. Okay, so this should all work here. So what I'm worried about right now is them playing Jinx and emptying their hand both this turn. So I'm considering just passing and trying to keep Sentry plus Flock available. Because I think that's like the... I think that's the scariest thing for me. 
But obviously I'm not I'm wasting mana. And it was a good pass. Because I don't want them to go into next turn of drawing an extra card with the Jinx and you know, maybe getting Super Mega Death Rockets and all that kind of stuff. Well, their board the board was completely full. Like they had six, you know they had all six spots filled, so filled. So developing before attacking wouldn't necessarily have worked for them. So they do have if they have another Jinx, we can parlay plus flock. Which, of course, they do, because it's the worst-case scenario for me. Let's them block with a two one if they want, but I think I think that's okay for me. Whoa, that's not a good block. That's not a good block. Yeah, that was not worth it. So we're looking good. Just gotta avoid them drawing, you know, like double decimate or something like that. Cool. First win, one and oh. Drink up. The taverns will sing our tale this evening. GG's. Okay, so we're playing against another deck that's aggressive, that uh, is all about going wide. I'm definitely considering just keeping all my entire hand, right? Like the 2-3, a good blocker on turn 2, like we saw that last game. Um, Death's Hand can kill Zoe, or just do something, like deal 2 damage to like a Draven. And then I think that Twisted Fate is going to be really important with like the red card. Um, and then... I'm planning on like having one Twisted Fate probably die pretty quickly, and then we need another Twisted Fate after that. Hey, Srammy. Probably should attack. So basically, do I want to Death's Hand this turn and then, you know, red card next turn and reset everything? Or do I want to play like this Fortune Croaker? We'll do that. We don't have to. I mean, I guess I'm not sure what kind of protection they're playing. I guess they're probably playing like Pill Cascades and stuff like that. Maybe I do need to Death's Hand. Maybe this won't work. I like the game plank. It's a good draw. Your path ends here. I want them to use the spinning axe on the spider. They did not, though. 
Hoping they would. Problem is, like, if I pass, they probably pass. I would like them to have priority this next turn. Like, this would have been a whole lot better if they had priority, or, like, they had the attack token on turn two, turn four. This all would have been a lot better for me. But that's that's kind of the problem. Is I, I would like to give them priority first. But I have a backup. Never lost a fair backup Twist of Fate. Yeah, like, I, I could attack. I could attack with Croker. But then, you know, they block with the biggest fan. That's kind of bad, but, you know, maybe I could attack and they just don't block and take it and then play something. That would be the best case scenario. Um, I, Sprayfin is an option. Like, Sprayfin into Death's Hand. So this challenge is Twisted Fate. My Death's Hand kills that. Let's go Sprayfin. I was thinking like, you know, I could play the Crackshot Corsair instead, but I went Sprayfin in case I drew Ravenous Flock, because I could see Ravenous Flock being important. Oh, that's not good. That is not good. That's not good. Oh, and they did have Pill Cascade. So that's likely just game right here, because this this is twelve. Time for the money. So I'm going down to one. Stupid. Yeah, great great hand. That was perfect two cards to have. Crowd favorite plus Pill Cascade. I think this game would have been completely different if we had, you know, if the attack tokens were switched. I honestly think that we, even with like what we've seen here, I think we win. I think we win this game if the attack tokens are switched. But they weren't, and it looks like they got this. Gotta go with the flow. Finally. All right, I need that ravenous flock. Okay, well, they just top deck decimate. Good game. One and one. Yeah, the second twist of fate did not help us. That is true, especially with drawing, you know, spray fin, spray fin. We did just end up having too many fours in hand. Same kind of thing. Get him, Butcher. Uh, question is, for for decks built around Twist of Fate, is it usually better to bait removal if possible before dropping him? It, it depends on the matchup, right? Like, the, the, the matchups are different. Um, it, and it depends on, like, what your goal is with your Twisted Fate. If, you're, if your goal is to try to level up your Twisted Fate, and, uh, like, if that's your goal, then, then yes. Um... My goal in that matchup is not leveling up Twisted Fate or protecting Twisted Fate. My goal in that kind of matchup is to use Twisted Fate as um, removal spell, basically, and just I just really care about the red and gold cards for Twisted Fate. I'm, I'm not playing Twisted Fate this turn. I'm definitely playing Sprayfin. It's just whether I want to attack. So assuming I play Sprayfin and then they play Sprayfin... What I want to, what I want that stuff to happen before combat or just attack. Um, a little worried about suit up, just a little bit. 
but not that much. I think I'm just going to attack. Well then. Alright, not bad. Oh. Definitely want Death's Hand. But. Never lost a fair game. Nah, wow, not gold carding. I was going to say, like, Twist of Fate red card, and then, you know, red card followed up by some Flux. Could be pretty cool. I want to wait on, like, I think red card's important here. Like, they're, they're, they're going to have, like, spray fins and all the purple fishes and stuff. But I, I kind of want to wait till they have some spray fins and purple fishes for that. Down to 15. There are four. Who's gonna get in my way? I'll just attack. Good blocks for them versus Twisted Fate. Good blocks. Yeah, I'm worried about Burble Fish. Right now. Need to kill this twisted fate though, but I feel like if I if I use red card, it's probably just better to gold card at this point. I assume gold card will hit the twisted fate and not the spray fin. They're both four cost two twos, so I'm not exactly sure, but I assume it would hit the champion. But I don't know that for sure. What? It hits the spray fin? Why would it hit the spray fin? Is it just random? This, like, Sprayfin has two keywords. Twisted Fate has one keyword. Well, that's going to cost me this game. Why would it not hit the champion? Yeah, that's going to cost me this game. <laughs> I guess you can win them all. Well, if it hit the left most, it would have hit Twisted Fate. It hit the card on the right. So it doesn't just do the left, the card on the left. Blue as the serpentine. So it's... The only reason to hit the spray fin is the spray fin has two keywords on it. And Twisted Fate has one. How do we draw our third Ravenous Flock? Are you kidding me? We just drew the third Ravenous Flock? Not even... We can't even draw the Death Sand? Can't even draw Death Sand, I guess. So yeah, so my, my Twisted Fate Gold card definitely costs us this game. My opponent played perfectly around Twisted Fate, though. They made they made great blocks. Stacking the odds. Twice, uh, blo you know, made blocks that you wouldn't necessarily expect, but they were really good blocks against Twisted Fate red card. 
they played very well. And um, we couldn't draw a Death Sand. Our Spray Fins drew exactly what we couldn't draw. And they played very well. And my gold card hit the wrong card. And so all that together, we lost. Okay, so I, I do like this matchup. Doesn't mean we're necessarily going to win, but I do like this matchup. That card's definitely out of here. I, I like that we have the attack token on turn one now this time, right? Like, that's th that really is a big deal um, in these aggressive, like, in these aggressive matches. That That's really a big deal. Ugh. Okay. Okay, so if I would have played Corsair, I would not have gotten through their Butcher, which is what I was kind of thinking, which is why I played Butcher. Um, What's that you got there? So why do I why do I attack here? I mean, I think I think the trade's good for me in it in like a you know most fortune deck. Like I I don't like I don't know I don't really like them having extra units that they can attack with with a, with a misfortune deck. So I think that all the trades are good. I have my orders. I never miss. I'll shoot the wings off a built wasp. In position. I've got us covered. Came a long way. Both. So I'll be playing the Iron Ballista on turn three. So, um, Black Magic says that it looks like even on Rune Terra's website it says tiebreakers are resolved from left to right. Well, yeah, it, it it got rid of the thing on the right. So I don't I don't know why it didn't hit the Twisted Fate. They're the same mana cost, same power toughness, and so yeah, you would think it'd be left to right, but no, it it just did the one on the right. So that's frustrating. Here's Death's Hand, the card that we needed one of our two spray fins to draw. We had a 60% chance to draw one the first time, then a 75% chance to draw one the second time. Neither time, we missed both the 60% and the 70%, or 75% with our spray fins. Unfortunately, I'm one mana short from Gangplank plus Death Sand, but me, still playing Gangplank. No. Could double spell with the Ballista Grenadier, but I like getting this Powder Keg in play right now. That's not a bad trade. So we know they have an auction fervor in hand. So if I if I death's hand, they get to they get to fervor. I could like stun misfortune, and then yeah, I think I think we do that. We're gonna need this ravenous flock to do something. I know I I know I'm not stunning like the elusive. <laughs> but my plan is to basically trade. 
Um, these two. For the fervor. So I do this, which forces them to fervor. And then we flock. So I end up at 12. Keep up, keep up. All right, so they have another fervor. Fortune favors the and another misfortune. Spray fans and twisted fates would definitely be good, good draws for us. Ravenous flock, not so much. Don't get ahead of yourself. Hell of a day. All right, so right now we're going down to four with just what's what we have here, and so if they just have a okay, well that's just game. So this is the least aggressive deck that we've played against ever with this deck. And I think I'm still just keeping Gangplank. It's not the easiest card to deal with. Okay, I, I like our hand a lot. Even though we don't have a three mana card yet, I think this is a very good hand. I like this hand. There's a three mana card. Is Fervor a better card for us to be playing than Ravenous Flock? I misplayed the the Ravenous Flock that I played last game. I, I misplayed it. But then, you know, we drew the second one, which we couldn't cast. The game before that, we had three of them in hand that we couldn't cast. So in, in the last two games, we've had four Ravenous Flocks that we couldn't cast. That's that's not a good feeling having cards that you can't cast. Um, but other times, like it, the game before that, it did help us kill a Jinx. Or is that like two games ago? It, it, some time ago, it did help us kill a Jinx. To get rich. So if I play the Sprayfin. Uh, like, basically, I, I kind of feel like they're going to use a removal spell here. If I play the Sprayfin, they definitely just kill the Sprayfin with the Mystic Shot. But if I attack, they kill that thing with the Mystic Shot. And now I can have the Sprayfin that can block, um, you know, an Ezreal or something. Like, Sprayfin's valuable. They really want to pass. Only considering just passing as well. But I'm going to play this. I'm going to keep the pressure on. No flock. Let them bleed out. I 
So I don't really want to play anything before combat and let them just sentry stun my gangplank again. So I'm just going to go into combat, and they of course like want to block and then make it a lot easier to kill my gangplank. Rid of a Leviathan and a Cooling Strike. I'm so good, I surprised myself. The world's a big place. Let's see all of it. Okay, so unfortunately, you for the my plan of like saving Twisted Fate for Gold Card for Ezreal with Flock. Unfortunately, they're playing the Ezreal here, Watch and, learn. and I don't get to kill that before it makes the Mystic Shot that kills my Gangplank. Car, get that mana. No okay, we'll see if they have a flock as well. They may just be putting that out there to make sure they have a blocker. That's what it looks like. Basically, I'm thinking, like, if their plan's Leviathan, is it worth it playing any of these other cards first, before combat? I'm not sure. Maybe it was. If I play Gangplank, they have... Um... They have the ability to, to challenge the Powder Keg with the Leviathan and the Overwhelm. Should be game with the decimates. Don't think they have any Nexus healing. It's a perfect Captain Farron draw for us. There we go. Okay, so I ended up two and three. Not bad. Yeah, basically whenever I did play the Farron, they needed to be able to have something like a Mystic Shot or something that stunned the Farron and um, yeah, maybe allowed you know, somehow a attack in. Right? Like they, had to, they had to attack and get damage, and once they passed the turn, that, the game was over. Okay, so we ended up 2-3. and three. Um, We had some difficult games in there. Difficult games to play. Uh, two of the games, um, I, I think I didn't take the best lines. Like, the, the very first game, I really liked how I played it and everything but then some of the other games we had some some tough lines and and uh, I, I don't think that I necessarily took the best lines I don't think I mulliganed the best in some of those games um, but that makes Legends of Runeterra great though you know even though how much Runeterra I do play still it's you don't always um, take the take the best decisions and and everything and and you know learned a lot from those games and we'll uh, have that going forward. Um, I, I like the deck. I think it's really strong. The only... I I basically like all the units in the deck. The spells are pretty awkward, though. Death's Hand and Ravenous Flock at different points are pretty awkward for spells. I'm, for the most part, 
really like Death's Hand, but a lot of champions have three health, and Death's Hand being a three mana spell that doesn't kill three health champions can be awkward at a lot of times, but the its versatility dealing uh, Nexus damage as well is really nice. But Flock can be Flock can look pretty bad at times. Some sometimes it's this is a you know a card that can be amazing or um, you can't cast it. And um, you know, hopefully it's it's amazing more often than than not. Um, but we saw even like that last game, you know, like we twice we killed four health champions for for one mana. You know, we killed the Ezreal, leveled up Ezreal, leveled up Jinx. You know, the fact they can do that for one mana is really nice. But then other times, like when we played against the Twisted Fate uh, deck, we were never able to cast Flock, and part part of that was my fault, right? Like I needed to red card with my Twisted Fate and turn on my Flocks, and I didn't. I gold carded expecting to kill the Twisted Fate, but we killed the Sprayfin instead. Um, so that was that was my fault. Then we just drew, you know, then our other Sprayfin drew the third Flock. Um, yeah, our deck is not built on leveling up Twisted Fate, and that doesn't that's not something that you try to do with this deck. It's not it's not like really a priority. Um, but I I think this deck's really strong. I would be pretty confident in in uh, playing five more games and going four one or better. Um, I think this is basically the low end of what our deck can do. I think that the two and three is just the low end of, um, you know, with the just, you know, variance in the game and also uh, the decisions I made that didn't put me in the best spot to win. But I think it's a, a really strong deck. I think it's probably the, the most likely it's probably the best deck we're playing today and one of the, you know, just a really good deck. And and you can see that I think highly of it because, of course, I played it in the seasonal tournament just a couple of days ago where we had a little bit more success there with it than uh, today. All right, but that's Gangplank's Fate. Very good deck. If you uh, you know try this try this one out for ranking up, I think this is a deck that I really would re recommend for ranking up. Um, but that's all I got here for it. So those of y'all on YouTube, of course, hit that like button over there and leave those comments if you try the deck out yourself. Um, I'd, li I'd really like to hear about it. Let me know how it goes for you over there. And um, like I said, I really do recommend... Uh, giving this deck a try, which is why you can't always just look at the record at the end and say two, three, you know, two, three. Okay. That deck's not good. Well, no, it is really good. We didn't have the best of luck and I didn't put myself in the best position to win either. So, you know, like the games are razor close. You know, sometimes you can go like, you know, five Oh with a deck that you're like, ah, that didn't really feel so good. We just got really lucky. And, uh, sometimes you go two, three with your, with a deck that you think's really good, but, um, you know, that's just really close games. So it's great about legends of Runeterra. All right, but that's all I got here for this one. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.